All right, welcome back. Um, previous lecture, we saw uh, a common source amplifier with uh, diode connected load, and we derived the gain equation for that. This is V out, this is V in, this is M2 and M1, and both of them were N MOSs. So the gain equation we came to, which included body effect, was AV equals W over L1 over W over L2 times 1 over 1 plus eta, where eta was GM B2 over GM2. I would suggest you go back to the previous lecture, the one on, um, I guess, common source amplifiers, diaconnected load, output characteristics to jog your memory on this one and come back to this one. So um, I've been shying away from uh, PMOSs till now and I thought let's include it now. Well it's nothing intimidating, it's just that um, I find NMOSs easy to work with. The expressions are simpler. Okay, so uh, let's now look at an example where we have the load to be a PMOS device instead of an NMOS. What happens is just everything is reversed. So for example, uh, let me draw it here for you. Well, the input device remains an NMOS. Please keep that in mind. And just the source and the drain gets reversed. Get reversed, okay? So this is M2 and M1. Now, uh, for convenience, let's forget the body effect for this example. Let me change our colors here. Okay. Let's forget the body effect for this example. And, um, if you look at, looked at the derivation for AV for the previous lecture, you'd understand that we canceled mu n and stuff like that. But here, because we have a PMOS device, you'll have mu p, and it won't get canceled. So the AV is pretty intuitive. It comes to mu n w over l1 over mu p w over l2. Okay, that's all it is. Now, what I want to talk about here is, for example, um, say we want to we want a gain of ten. Okay, let's look at the pros and cons of this equation. Say we want a gain of ten, and forget the minus sign here for now. What should your value inside the square root be to give you a value of ten outside? So it should obviously be a hundred. Okay, given the fact that the mobility of n mos is two times the mobility of PMOS, so we have two times fifty inside. If you cancel mu n and mu p, you get two, and the rest is fifty. That what does this mean? It means w over l one over w over l two should give us fifty. That means w over l one is fifty times of w over l two. Now, what does this mean? It means that this device here, the input transistor right here is 50 times larger than the one above it. Now, this results in a disproportionate amplifier design, which is not at all suitable, right? So, even if you look at it from a la large signal point of view, so this is one of the uh, cons of this equation. Well, let's put it in a different kind of equation and, and, and analyze it. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing in this lecture is basically analyzing the gain equation and possibly point out where we could make improvements okay so uh, this was small signal analysis when we talk about GM and all that it's small signal let's go to large signal how do we go to large signal as I told you before again in this circuit there's only one current that's gonna flow through both the transistors be it PMOS or NMOS it doesn't matter okay so if you write the equation for this current uh, what would you get? So the current passing through the PMOS is same as the current passing through the NMOS. So you have mu n for the NMOS first, W over L1 times VGS minus VTH, the whole square, VGS1 minus VTH1, the whole square, equals mu P times W over L2 
and we put a modulo sign because VGS becomes VSG when you talk about a PMOS, right? So it's just a matter of change in signs, that's all. So we still put VGS2 minus VTH2, the whole squared. Okay, so on simplifying this, what do you get? For example, your gain equation is given by root of mu n w over l1 over mu p w over l2. So keep this here and bring this term right here. What do you get? You get, on the right hand side, let me not write all that again. So on the right hand side, what you get is VGS2 minus VTH2, the whole squared, over VGS1 minus VTH1, the whole squared. And uh, if you take the root, the, square, the squares go. So your AV is approximately equal to VGS2 minus VTH2 over VGS1 minus VTH1. Okay. Now what does this signify? The one previous to this one where we said W over L over W over 2 signified disproportionate transistor sizes. Now what does this signify then? It shows us that if you want to gain a 10, then the overdrive voltage of the second transistor has got to be 10 times that of the overdrive of the first transistor. What does this mean again? It means VGS2 minus VTH2 is 10 times that of VGS1 minus VTH1, correct? Now, how does this impact us? Suppose VGS1 minus VTH1 is about 200 millivolts, which is the nominal value, times 10 is 2 volts. 2 volts is the overdrive you need on the second transistor. Now, you come to an analogy in that diagram. Say this d design is that of a building, okay? And you have V out here, right? So just look at this de design. You have a VDS drop here, and you have a VDS drop here, okay? The voltage is going to drop here, then it has to supply it for V out, and then it has to supply for the VDS below it. Who supplies all this voltage? It's the VDD source voltage. I mean, it's the supply voltage, correct? And in today's designs, it's really low. Uh, let's just, for example, consider 3 volts. So 3 volts has to be proportionately given to each of these three branches here. So if your VDS2 is 2 volts, and this is maybe 0.2 volts. Now, why am I saying this is 2 volts and 0.2 volts when this is VGS minus VT? For devices to remain in saturation, what's the, what's the condition? VDS has to be greater than or equal to VGS minus VT, correct? So if it's 200 millivolts the overdrive, the VDS has to be greater than that. So your 3 volts is the total you have, and out of that 2 volts is gone. 0.2 volts is gone. What do you have left? Just 0.8 volts. There's a term called swing, okay? Swing is how much the output of your circuit can oscillate, okay? Greater swing is always desirable. It's easily detectable on for the next stage. Okay, just suppose you're you're decreasing all the leeway the output has out here. All right. Just suppose there were two forklifts and you were pressing them against each other. The uh, suppose a rubber ball was inside of it. It could oscillate this way, and if you keep pressing it, it's going to be all, more, all the more constrained oscillations, right? That means your swing is severely hit. So, this design where it says VGS2 minus VTH2 over VGS1 minus VTH1 severely affects the swing, the output swing of the, tra of the amplifier, okay? So, two things we saw. When it was the W over L1 over W over L2, uh, mu P, mu N, if you want. Sorry, mu N, mu P. We saw that we had disproportionate transistor sizes. When we have this, we see there's a terrible hit to the output swing. So these are not suitable. And I wanted to point these out. And as is customary with our lectures at Enerati, whenever we finish a difficult concept, we end it with a nice story. So stay tuned.
tuned in for a, a very interesting story coming up next. Thanks, guys.